Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel. We're talking baseball, we hope. What's up, Jim? Yeah, it was fun while it lasted, Greg. We had uh, four or five days of baseball, and it was, it was enjoyable to have it back on there, and hopefully we get to continue to have it for a long time. Hopefully people can be safe, but a lot of uncertainty right now. I guess we're just going to plow ahead and, uh, you know, pretend as if these games will be going on. We'll see what happens, but it's definitely a uncertain and weird time once again. Two games thus far have been canceled today. That's the Phillies and the Yankees, the Orioles and the Marlins, but that leaves every other team playing. So let's get into it. Your top starting pitcher on the board today, or at least the highest price starting pitcher, is Tyler Glass now, who started the season awesomely last year. And hopefully today, Jim, he gets off to just as hot of a start. Yeah, definitely. And when you look at the pitchers on this slate, Greg, there aren't a lot of guys who can get strikeouts. And Glass now is definitely one of those pitchers. Last year, before that injury, a 3.18 skill interactive ERA with a 33% strikeout rate and a 29% hard hit rate allowed. So all the numbers are there for Tyler Glass now, especially against the Braves offense that will strike out to be the number one pitcher for tonight. Now, the reason I'm not going to Glass now in cash games, despite liking him for tournaments, is I'm not sure what his pitch count will be. He was a late arriver to camp because he tested positive for COVID-19. So didn't get there until later Threw 49 pitches in an exhibition 10 days ago, and then went three innings in the exhibition after that. So Glass now, I'm not sure what the length will be. He told Neil Salons of Ray's radio, he wasn't sure how long he would go either, but when he's out there, we know he'll get strikeouts. We know he'll be really good, which is why I'm still willing to go here in tournaments at $9,700. Glasnow, if he gives us five innings, could be the highest scoring pitcher on this slate given the other options at our disposal. So Glasnow, despite not being a cash game play to me, still very much in play for tournaments. Keep an eye on the news throughout the day today. If you see that Glasnow is going to be on a very restrictive pitch count, Maybe you want to go elsewhere then, but if we can get five innings out of him, I could see this being a good day for Glass now regardless. So still in my map for right now, but monitoring the news throughout the day to make sure things don't change. The Rays are always a weird one, too, because we've seen how quickly they'll pull a starting pitcher coming back from injury. They want to make sure that uh, everything is good to go for the long term, right? This, this vision, and that's the way the, Mar the Rays played baseball, the Marlins, too, when they were playing. But when it comes to Tampa Bay, they don't have that much time to make up this year, right? There's only 57 games left. So every game matters 2.7 times that game, which means Tyler Glass now, if he is healthy and if he's pitching well, hopefully he lasts longer uh, tonight. Tyler Glass now, the top starting pitcher on the board for Jimmy Sonis. But if you want to get a little bit cheaper, but we want to stay young, let's go to Houston's Joshua James, who was the apple of everyone's eye last spring. And then it didn't happen. He got hurt. He was in the bullpen. It was up and down. Towards the end of the year, he got it going. And then in spring, Dusty Baker announces he's in the starting rotation. And unlike Tampa Bay and the Marlins, Dusty Baker don't care about pitching limits. He don't care about innings. He don't care about pitches. He doesn't care about anything, which makes me all in on Astros starters, including Josh James. Yeah, Dusty didn't even care about pitch counts in the exhibitions because Joshua James went 82 pitches in his final exhibition start. So, yeah, he's transitioning from the bullpen to the rotation. But if we're, like, making betting lines for, for pitch counts tonight, Josh James might be near the top of that list given how long he went in that exhibition. And that's a good thing because there's not a lot of certainty from a pitch count perspective on the board for tonight. And I'm going to take it where I can get it. In addition to the pitch count certainty with Joshua James, we also get a really good situation because he is at home in a pitcher-friendly park and facing the Mariners. And the Mariners, not really the most uh, inspiring offense, if we're going to be nice here. An 88 WRC plus last year for their active roster against righties with a 26% strikeout rate. And we know that Joshua James, despite the walk concerns that kept him in the bullpen these past couple of years, he can get them strikeouts. 16.2% swinging strike rate last year as a reliever. So, yeah, it's concerning to use a guy transitioning into the rotation because he may not be able to maintain the high strikeout ways he had before. But even if we take down that strikeout rate from where it was, put it down, you know, like – even 10 percentage points, he will still be the number two guy on the slate behind Tyler Glasnow from an expected strikeout rate perspective. So I think Joshua James actually is my cash game pitcher for tonight. Given the pitch count, given the matchup, given the park, I think everything aligns for him to be a cheap cash game option, which is something, Greg, I may not say the rest of this season. But I think here it does apply for James. $6,700, you can go nuts at hitter. I think that James makes sense both for cash games and for tournaments. Josh James has the matchup, he has the team, he has the ballpark, 
and he has the price here, Jim. A cheap cash game option, not something we're used to, under $7,000 for the pitcher of your choice in a cash game. Doesn't happen often. Let's take advantage with Josh James and the Astros tonight. Let's move on to the top hitters on the board, which leads us, of course, to Christian Yelich. Yelich, $4,400, and that mini slump at the end of the spring, it's over now, so let's take advantage. Yeah, Yelich is, is someone we can actually afford for today, given that we have Joshua James as our number one pitcher for cash games for tonight. So whenever you can afford Christian Yelich, you should be inclined to take advantage. I think this is a great spot to do so for tonight. And the weird thing with the Brewers here is that they're facing a piggyback situation with Stephen Brault and Chad Cool, which means when you target Brewers hitters, which you should, because I would stack against either Brault or Cool. You need to find guys who can hit both left-handed and right-handed pitching. Now, Yelich, despite being a lefty, we know can hit anybody who throws a baseball towards him because he's just that good. So Christian Yelich, $4,400, definitely someone I want to go at for tonight. But I think in general, when you are stacking this Brewers team, just keep that in mind. You want guys who can hit both lefties and righties. Justin Smoke, a switch hitter. Kesson Hira, uh, a really good right-handed batter. Uh, Ryan Braun as well. So just keep that in mind. But – with Yelich, it doesn't really matter. You know we can hit lefties, he can hit righties, just the same. So I think despite this being a not great park for offense in general, it is warm in Pittsburgh for tonight, should set up well for Chris and Yelich, and we can afford him. So I think $4,400 Yelich affordable for tonight and someone I want to target with regularity while I have the chance to do so. Getting Josh James in the lineup, well, that provides a lot more, and that includes Christian Yelich, who we're able to get in there tonight, and hopefully he – does what he did earlier this weekend, and that's hit bombs. Yelich obviously in a great spot as he is every night, and that means he should be in our lineup as well. Let's move on to another guy that hits bombs, and that would be Peter Alonzo of the New York Mets, the first baseman led the league in home runs last year as a rookie. He's still looking to get on the board here this year, and hopefully he can start it tonight against Boston. Yeah, I think we're going to be targeting Boston pitching pretty regularly this year, Greg, because to a great start and that was against the Orioles but now they face a really competent offense in the New York Mets this time Josh Osich will be the opener followed by Zach Godley and Godley is a pitcher I liked a lot back in the day with the Diamondbacks but he's clearly not that pitcher anymore last year as a starter Godley had a 5.82 xFIP 16 percent strikeout rate still had a lot of ground balls but it came with a 43 percent hard hit rate allowed now he's facing a New York Mets team that will definitely pop some dingers and Alonzo very much on that list and it doesn't matter if he's facing the righty godly or the righties Alonzo a 40 percent hard hit rate with a 42 percent fly ball rate so regardless of whom he is facing we know Alonzo is going to mash so I think this Mets team is the top stack of the night. I know I like the Brewers a lot too, but I think the Mets are number one. Good park for hitting. A lot of good hitters involved, and Alonzo is number one at the top of that list. Stacking the Mets, stacking the Brewers, that's the plan. We'll continue on with that in just a moment. But Peter Alonzo certainly uh, deserves to be in our lineup. The price is right, so let's get him in there. But like you said, we're, we're stacking Mets here. And it's not just Peter Alonzo that deserves to be in the lineup. It's his teammate, Jeff McNeil, as well. Another dude that just smashes right-handed pitching. What do we expect tonight, Jim? I expect him to match some right-handed pitching tonight, Greg, because that's just what Jeff McNeil does. And most importantly, he does that while still never striking out. Last year against righties, a 39% uh, hard hit rate for McNeil, paired with a 13% strikeout rate, which is just a phenomenal combination. W with Josh, Josh Osage starting, you could be concerned that McNeil might get bumped down the order, but... Even when they were facing lefties this weekend, McNeil was still in the top third. So he can face Osage and be there and then eventually face Godley as well. And Godley really did struggle with left-handed batters. So Jeff McNeil at $3,000, Michael Conforto at $3,100. Good building blocks for tonight. Pairing them with Pete Alonzo would give your lineup a lot of upside. It kills me that we've already gotten to the point in the season where we're bashing Zach Godley. Like, I like to build him up first like you normally do before we, like, just – totally go after him but it's day four and this is where we're at which is it hurts my soul but we're stacking Mets we're stacking Brewers Pete Alonzo Michael Conforto Jeff McNeil get them all in your lineup tonight and thanks to Joshua James well we actually can afford to and that's the best part but Josh James is not the only cheap player we're making sure is in our lineup because we've also reached a point in the season where it's Abisail Garcia time listen I'm a big Garcia guy. I have been since he was mini Mickey. And now in Milwaukee, we talked about stacking the Mets. You want to talk about stacking the Brewers. Well, now it's our chance with Abisail Garcia. 
Jim says it way better than I do. Yeah, Vicia Garcia, Greg, is a guy who we target generally because of what he does against lefties. But as mentioned with the Yelich section, we need guys who can hit both lefties and righties. And Garcia is at least good enough against righties where we can take some swings here. Last year, just against righties, a 38% hard hit rate with a 24% strikeout rate. The strikeout rate a little bit high is definitely not Jeff McNeil, but it's low enough where he will still put the ball in play and good things all in play and he, that's on top of the fact that he will probably get at least one plate appearance against Brault who is a lefty so we get one plate appearance against the lefty and then the other ones against the righty where we can expect out of to at least put the ball in play and potentially do some damage there as well he is $2,500 over the weekend when the Brewers are facing just righties he did hit fifth and sixth in the lineup in the two games that he played so I'd expect him to bat right in the middle of that order giving you good pop and potentially getting some time against lefties that's enough for me to take the dive on Avicio Garcia at $2,500. You had me at Avicio. That's all I needed to hear. In the lineup today for the Brewers, and E, your family lineup as well, super, super cheap. Stacking the Mets, stacking the Brewers, and stacking yourself some cash. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, we appreciate the time. Good luck today. I appreciate it, Greg. Same to you. Hopefully we're watching some baseball later on tonight, and hopefully we're talking more baseball later this week as well. Absolutely. More baseball, more sports, more fun. Tomorrow, we'll be joined by Davis Maddox as we take a look at this week on the PGA Tour. For Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Stay safe, everybody.